Hey guys, I just wanted to make a video um, talking about my back today. I think a while ago I had made a video uh, for the beginning stages of what was taking place with my back, but um, basically I have a thing called Bertolotti Syndrome, which technically is just a name that people have put on it. Um, I believe the official uh, name for something like this is the L5 S1 sacralization, um, or the enlargement of the transverse process on the L5. Um, so basically, right, you've got your vertebra, and then you've got the transverse process on the side, um, and just the one side of my transverse process, the left side on my L5 is enlarged, and it's enlarged to the point of where um, it has a, they call it a pseudo articulation with my ilium on my hip. Um, so basically the bony part of the transverse process, um, touches the top of my hip and rubs, um, constantly. So it's created this, uh, pseudo joint, uh, between the two bones. And then, um, the other piece of the transverse process is going down and uh, rubbing um, or sacralizing, uh, sacralization. I'm not sure what, what they would classify it specifically as. Um, but the, the bottom part of the transverse process is also, um, it's got a pseudo articulation with my uh, sacrum. So, um, yeah, I got a lot going on down there. Basically, I guess I'll start from the beginning. Um, I'm kind of laying down right now because today is one of the days where I'm in quite a bit of pain um, and I haven't been for a while and that's kind of why I wanted to make this video was because I knew I wanted to talk about it all but I wanted to make sure that I kind of got to the point where I was understanding everything that was going on back there and had made a decision on what I was going to do based on um, the different procedures that I was able to get temporary and long-term. So, um, right now I have not had a surgery, but I guess I'll start from the top. Um, where about three, maybe five, three to five months ago, I was at the gym lifting pretty heavily. Um, I'm a power lifter or power builder, um, a CrossFit, uh, competitor. And I also do a lot of dancing and that sort of thing. Um, I used to be a ballroom dancer. So, I use my body quite a lot, um, pretty much every single day for my work, and um, and I own a gym here in Prescott, Arizona, so it's really important to me that my body feels good because that's my biggest asset is that, you know, I've got strength behind my movement and proper form without pain and that sort of thing, but um, as of right now, that is not the case uh, as far as the pain goes because... Um, maybe five months ago, I was in the gym lifting heavy, heavily. Um, it was a heavy deadlift. Um, basically, all of my life, I had struggled with um, pain in my back. And originally, I thought it was just because maybe one side of my back was overworked comparatively um, to the other. And after I had gotten that evened out and everything was symmetrical, I, I was really... Um, honing in on my form on everything so I knew it wasn't something that I was doing um, but I can continue to have pain just on one one spot on my lumbar back um, and I never really knew what was going on and so when I was lifting um, I basically did a heavy a heavy deadlift pull and then immediately after um, I kind of knew something was wrong and aggravated um, and I thought I had popped a disc or hurt my back in a different way or some sort of muscular um, issue and so shortly after I think one or two days after I got x-rays done and basically the x-rays showed the articulation between um, the, the transverse process and then the two points on my ilium and my sacrum and it's pretty big. It's like a paddle size. Um, or I guess it's like a paddle shape, but, uh, quite a decent size in order to rub on everything. So, um, 
once I had uh, figured out that that was what was causing my pain for all of the years that I was suffering with great, great amounts of pain during movement, um, I kind of started pursuing it uh, because I lived every single day with pain um, to where I was starting to get really depressed. Um, I was pushing through the pain on the daily um, at the gym. There was a lot, like, it was really, it was really affecting everything, and there was some days that were better, and then there was some days that were so much worse, and I took a great deal of time off, um, from lifting to see if it would make it better, if it would make it worse. Um, I guess in the long run, the doctors had told me lifting has improved it because the muscular, um, stability around my spine kind of took some of the the pressure off of where the two points were touching, although um, it would get irritated because of the heavy lifting, um, and those two, those two or three points were, um, were really uh, aggravated during those times. So it was kind of like a um, win lose situation with that one, where I would go through point periods of pain and then periods of relief um, for half of a day or very short, for a short amount of time. So, um, I guess where I'm at today is I originally, um, went and saw a, a surgeon for this procedure to get the, um, transverse process resected. So basically that large mass, they would just take it out. Um, and I wanted to get the surgery as soon as possible. After doing a lot of research and figuring out what was the best for me, I made the decision instead of getting the surgery ASAP, I decided to postpone it to next year. Um, although looking back on it now, I really do wish that I had just gotten the surgery because um, the other option for me instead of the surgery was to get um, a epidural or a, um, steroid injection into that L5, S1 space, and then also um, into both of the SI joints, they injected um, the steroid as well, because I believe uh, due to the articulating um, bones, I've created space. Oh, I got a package. Hey. hey, you're fine. Come on, buddy. So... Anywho, um, due to the articulation, tell me more. Come hey. So anyway, due to the articulation, I ended up getting, um, space between both of my SI joints because of the pressure um, and also probably due to my heavy lifting for many years and all of that stuff. Um, I think it's all just compounded and created a lot of issues within my hip and my pelvis and my lumbar and everything. So um, long story long, um, I ended up putting off my surgery. Instead, I got the injections. I wish that I had not gotten the injections. Um, as, as wonderful as they were. And, uh, I, I mean, from, from the start, I was pretty much against getting them because I thought, oh, why would I just bandaid the situation instead of getting a permanent fix? Um, but my, my thought process was because the recovery time, hold on, buddy, because the recovery time was so long, it was about a six months recovery, um, roughly depending on how it goes. But, um, I thought, okay, I'll do as much competition, as much as I could, um, between now and the beginning of April, 2020. Um, and then I'll get my surgery after that. So basically this year I have a CrossFit competition coming up and then the beginning of next year I have a bodybuilding competition. Um, so I thought, okay, I'll just get that stuff done. Um, I'll do all the things that I want to do for the year and, uh, and then I'll get my surgery and go through the recovery process. But, um, 
looking back on it now, I really wish that I just made the decision to get the surgery because I got the injection maybe a week and a half ago. Um, roughly, it's supposed to last around one month to three months, depending, um, or so I was told. I believe that because, um, because it's bone on bone constantly, that it, it really only gave me relief for about a week and a half. Um, so kind of unfortunate because now today is the first day that I've been in severe pain again. So it's, I'm definitely struggling today, um, trying to function. I'm laying down right now because of the pain. I can't really sit for long. I can't really stand comfortably for long either. Um, so I've just been trying to lay down as much as I possibly can. But anywho, um, the biggest reason for, for making this video was I kind of wanted to explain my process and why I decided to choose, um, the injection versus the surgery right away and why for me in my situation, um, why I wish I would have just done the surgery. And now I'm in the position of, um, either getting two more shots and trying to figure out where, uh, where and when the best times would be to, to space those shots out. Um, I guess my body can take up to three shots in six months. Um, but again, I never wanted to do this shot anyway. So it was kind of a waste of money and time. Um, and, uh, it was actually quite scary because, I mean, very scary in a good way, almost, if that makes sense. But I got the injection done. Um, I had no pain and I haven't had no pain for many, many, many years. And, uh, so it was very weird one day just waking up and not having pain. Um, and it was fun. Like I did all of the things I wanted to do. I enjoyed moving. I enjoyed lifting. Um, I thought, oh, this is what a normal person feels like. Um, or this is what a young person should feel like, or, you know, someone who's fully capable of doing all types of movements, but then um, restricted with the mobility of the two bones locking up together or like just the, the pure pain in some of the positions are really difficult. Um, but for me, I think the hardest part was that I pushed through that pain, um, in order to train and in order to do the things that I want to do. And then I have the, the result of even more pain and, um, discomfort the day after or shortly after my training or you know just the pain during the training so very very painful um all the time very painful all the time I never really um liked taking pain medication or anything like that I do a topical CBD oil um but it's very 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 temporary relief um so, so far I've gotten a lidocaine injection, which was to make sure that the pain was specifically coming from the one point, um, of the articulation. And so they injected the lidocaine and that was a temporary relief for about an hour or two. Uh, and then I got the steroid injection into my L5S1 and then also into the, uh, SI joints and that, um, complete relief for a week and a half. Um, and now I'm at the point where all of the pain is back and, uh, I'm just deciding what to do now and, um, and seeing, you know, where, where to go with it all. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share my story because I know there's a lot of people, um, looking for information on the Bertolotti syndrome or on the L5S1 articulation. Um, or the enlargement of the transverse process, all one in the same. Um, and so I know for me, kind of living through pain and then making the decision not to have the pain, it was very difficult to find information on this. Um, so, and it was very difficult to find a surgeon. Um, but I'm going to, the, the people I'm going to see, I've got, um, 
Dr. Tiffany Perry at uh, Cedars Sinai in California. Very awesome, 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 amazing surgeon. Amazing, amazing facility if you can get into Cedars. Um, they are top notch. Um, and then with um, my back injections, I'm seeing Dr. Baker with um, Nova Spine in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, he's amazing. He's been there for me. Um, especially because the confusion between, do I get the surgery? Do I do injections? Um, you know, what's a safe amount of, um, the injection to have and just the whole process. He's been absolutely spectacular. Nova Spine is wonderful. All the people there are amazing. Same with Cedars. Everyone you meet is absolutely spectacular. Um, so I hope that, um, I hope that I can continue with my competitions, uh, and kind of complete some of the goals that I want to, um, want to do this year. And, uh, I would like to hopefully do it pain free or less pain somehow, some way. Um, and then, uh, come April, I hope to go through with the surgery and start up, a speedy recovery. Um, the recovery process for, for the, um, for the surgery specifically, specifically for the resection of the transverse process with no, uh, added equipment into my spine, um, with no fusion, nothing like that. So it's just the resection. Um, basically they said that it was a very painful surgery and then also, um, that it was probably going to be about a six months recovery, um, because those first, few weeks, you know, you can't do much. Um, then they require only walking and then after a certain amount of time, only swimming. And then after a certain amount of time, only lifting five pounds of weight. And then I believe up to 15 pounds of weight and then moderate activity. And then you can kind of see how you feel about doing your regular training. And for me, my training's um, pretty intense. So, um, we'll see what what it feels like at that point. So I, I'm not sure just because it's not, I'm not a very dormant person. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all of the information I have. Um, I, I don't, I don't really know what else to say about the whole situation. I can certainly give my opinion, um, on all of, on everything that I've gotten done. I've had numerous, numerous, numerous x-rays and MRIs and CT scans and just about everything. Chiropractic. I've done chiropractic. I've done um, needling and acupuncture. I've done TENS unit, uh, aqua therapy, um, physical therapy, everything. I've tried working out. I've tried not working out. Um, honestly, I've tried everything. So, um, I guess with all that being said, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I can certainly give you my non-professional opinion on it um, and kind of let you know my thoughts based on my situation. Um, so if that's the case, you can find my gym. I'll, it's called All Athletes Welcome Gym in Prescott, Arizona. Um, we're on Facebook and social media, uh, Facebook, like Instagram, Twitter, on YouTube, um, or you can reach out to me through email, which is all athletes welcome at gmail.com. Um, or of course, comment down below. I'll probably be posting more videos of the surgery, of the recovery, of how my competitions went, of everything. So, um, like and subscribe if you wanna. If not, check back in if you're struggling with Bertolotti syndrome. Um, just because. There isn't a whole lot of information, so I'm trying to get what I know about it out there, because um, I know searching for the information on this end was, was pretty tough, so yeah. Alright, you guys. Thanks. Bye.